Welcome to the math record. Today we'll be learning about how to score 750 plus on the math SAT. This video would be the first part of a collection of videos called the math SAT series. This series will tackle the math portion of the SAT in depth. Disclaimer, just because the video says how to score a 750 plus on the math section of the SAT doesn't mean you're guaranteed a high score. I can't promise you anything. The number is just based on personal reasoning from data I get it from my friends who are either as good as math as me or are taught by me. And I'm not just saying this because it might be hard, which everyone might be thinking right now, but I'm telling you right now it really isn't. I'll be explaining the difficulty of the exam later on in the video. Trust me when I say I can help you with math, I've taken multiple SATs. Not to brag, but I myself had gotten pretty good scores. On the PSAT during my sophomore year, I scored a 760 out of 760, which is perfect. On my SAT, I scored a 790 out of 800 the first time, and then the second time, I scored a perfect 800 out of 800. Well, now that I'm done bragging, thankfully, let's proceed on to the purpose of the video. Whenever I take any math exam, I follow a three-part system. Part 1. Try to finish the test as quickly and efficiently as possible. This means answering any questions that are easy. Don't be afraid to skip difficult questions. I sometimes do too. Usually, I skip any questions that either I can't solve, require a long time to solve, or questions I'm unsure about but I know I could probably solve. I usually put a slash next to a question to know I can't solve it and a question mark if I am sure and need to solve that question later. Part 2. Check all your previous answers to make sure they are correct. In this part, I usually use the exact same way I solved the question the first time to make sure I didn't make any math mistake. This is a really simplified example, but this part usually fixes mistakes like 1 plus 1 equals 3 when the answer is 2. If your answers differ, redo, redo, redo the question to make sure you are correct. Part 3. Solve any unanswered question. This means any questions you didn't solve in the first part, you try to solve them now. Try to solve the easiest problems that you think you can finish with the time you have left. Overall, this uh, system prioritizes confidence in your answer first and then, and then your score. For your information, this isn't the only way to tackle the SAT. This is just my way. Don't try to use this way if it doesn't work for you. Everyone has their individual way of solving questions. Just because I have high scores in the SAT doesn't mean my method is better. better. It, just, it could mean I am better at math or I just spend more time studying. I advise you to time your tests to see if this method works for you. Try other strategies if you like. They might be even better. Combine some strategies if you want. Just try to find the most comfortable way for you. So in summary, 1. Solve any easy questions and mark down difficult questions to return to later. 2. Check answers for mistakes. And 3. Solve any unanswered questions. Uh, okay, let's go back to talk about the difficulty of the math portion. From my experience, the math SAT is actually fairly is actually fairly easy. For the math for background, the math portion is, is split into two parts: non-calculator, then calculator. For the non-calculator section, you are given 25 minutes for 20 questions, which is broken down into 15 multiple choice and five resp and five re response. And for the calculator, you are given 55 minutes for 38 questions, which is broken down into 30 multiple choice and eight free response. For both sections, the content covered is pretty basic. It mostly uses elementary school uh, concepts like equations, geometry, and charts. The only high school material used are pretty basic. For example, the question would be uh, about complex numbers and factors of equations. There are probably like four or five questions of these. Another reason I do so well on the exam is probably due to my calculator. I own and use a TI, a TI Inspire CX. The Inspire has a pretty easy to read spreadsheet that could create regressions pretty easily and the main calculator function has almost everything calculator related in a compact way. The only downside is that you might not know where everything is, but you can fix it by spending more time using, using it or just googling it. And the other is the price. It costs more than the TI-84 and currently I think is, a, is around $150, but trust me, this calculator can most likely last you for life. Also, the Inspire is not as bulky and feels like just a larger version of a phone. It even has advanced programs which you can download online. Another way to excel on the SAT is your attitude. If you don't think you have enough time to solve the question, the reason is that you either are solving questions too slow, focusing on the wrong questions, or you are just plain nervous. Our future videos would tackle some of these issues by going through questions in depth so you become more familiar with the exam and maybe correct some of those testing habits. I can't tell you to stop being nervous, but like I said before, the math SAT is not as hard as you think. 
Just a few more preparation and learning would get you pretty far. I'm fairly confident that you'll be able to score a 750 plus. I really hope two friends, one with a 780 and another with a 760. If you need any math uh, advice, my email is at the description below. Feel free to message me and, and, and ask me questions. I can't promise I'll answer everyone on time, but I'll try my best. Alternatively, feel free to comment below if you want. I try to answer as much as possible. Anyways, thanks for watching. Good luck with the SAT, and I'll see you at the next part in the math record.